Good morning. It's uh, Friday, July 17th, and I wanted to share some thoughts with you from the book of Ecclesiastes. Uh, planning on doing a, a walk through the book of Ecclesiastes in the days ahead. Just been reading through there, and uh, when you get to the end of the book in chapter 12, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, the last two verses say this. Solomon says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty or responsibility of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Uh, the book of Ecclesiastes is, is Solomon's study of life. Um, Solomon basically walks you uh, through all the various things that he has tried in life, and, and Solomon basically says, I've tried it all at least all that the world has to offer. I've, I've been increased with power and wealth, and I found that it was vanity. I've accomplished great works, and I found that there was vanity in that. That didn't satisfy. Uh, I've, I've searched after. I've secured knowledge, uh, but even that uh, turned out to be vanity. I tried the best, the, the best of the very best that this world can offer, and I found that, that all of it is, is vanity, uh, all of it was, was empty or unsatisfactory. And so he makes this, this grand conclusion in these two verses. Um, he's telling us what, what he figured out, what the great secret of life was, and, and the two things that he found that were of great importance, that, we were, that were why we were here, was first of all to fear God, uh, to, to reverence the Lord, um, to, uh, to worship, to adore him, um, and, and then also to keep his commandments, to do what God tells us to do. And so, so we reverence him and we obey him. Uh, we live right is basically what, what, what Solomon is saying. Um, there are a lot of different ideas about what constitutes living right. And uh, the, the further along we get uh, in the timeline of the history of man, that, uh, that, that idea of living right, uh, it, it morphs and it changes and it transforms. Um, uh, but even within the con context and confines of the church, um, when you think about living right, there are a lot of different ideas. To, to some, living right, it, it simply means to attend church, um, uh, to be involved in the activities of the church, to, to give unto the church. Uh, some think it means to follow the golden rule, uh, do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. Uh, some think it means to live morally, and, uh, and they have their, their own little list of, of things that they abide by. Uh, some would incorporate the idea of witness, and, and all of those things are certainly involved in, in living right. But Solomon said living right, it, it, it involved acknowledging God, fearing God, reverencing Him, letting everything revolve around Him, putting God first with our time, our, our treasure, our talents. Uh, every, every decision we make, God needs to be uh, the consideration in, in our scheduling, the consideration in our finances, the consideration in, in the things that we do. Uh, and then it also involved obeying God. So we acknowledge God and we obey God. We keep his commandments and uh, we, we don't try to get out from under them. We don't try, to, uh, don't try to redefine them. We simply obey what God told us to do. And, and I would submit unto you there are three reasons why we should live right. Uh, there's an internal reason, first of all, for living right. In the book of Romans chapter 13 and verse 5, Paul is talking about our responsibility as believers of submitting unto authority. And uh, uh, I think he's alluding unto, unto governmental authority, but, uh, but, but authority in general, and because all authority is an expression of the authority of God, it, it at least points to the reality that God is the ultimate authority and we fall under, under his auspices. And so, so he's talking about, about submitting unto authority. And, and in, in the first uh, four verses of Romans chapter 13, he basically says you better do it because if you don't, there's a consequence. There's wrath that comes from not submitting under that authority. And, and then he sort of summates it in verse 5. He says, wherefore, you or we must needs be subject. We, we must be in submission to this authority, not only for wrath, not just because of the, the consequence of wrath or, 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 or punishment, but also for conscience sake. Now think about that. We do it for conscience sake. Uh, we do right, not just because of the wrath, but also because of our conscience. Uh, we have to live 
with ourself. Uh, when I was young, when I was young, I, I obeyed uh, because of wrath. But as you get a little bit older, um, your, your, your conscience begins to bother you. You obey your parents, you obey authority because of conscience. Uh, when we don't do right, our conscience gets the best of us. You know, a polygraph test, it, it, it works because of that premise. A guilty conscience, it causes folks to react differently when they lie than when they tell the truth. And, 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 and that it causes great stress when they lie because it goes against their conscience. And, and so, so they can tell uh, when, there's a, when there's a difference, when there's a shift. Uh, there was a fellow in the military, he wrote Ann Landers years ago. And he sent her some money uh, to give to, to the Pentagon. And uh, while he was in the military, he had stolen an ashtray, two pens, and a stapler. Uh, he had retired. He had gone on in life. But, but it had so bothered him uh, that he, he sent the money years later and told her uh, to make sure that, uh, that she got it then because he just couldn't live with his conscience any longer. And, and, and so uh, the conscience is a powerful thing. In, in, in Genesis chapter 42, uh, you have the account where, <clears throat> where Joseph had been sold into slavery prior to that uh, by his brothers. They despised him. They got rid of him, got him out of the scene. He ends up in Egypt. Uh, long story short, he's elevated by God to become the number two man. Uh, he, he is the only, uh, he is the, the highest authority under Pharaoh in the land. He's managing this time of famine uh, he's keeping track of all the resources, and uh, he's, he's selling uh, the excess that they've put away for this time of famine under his leadership, and, and uh, his brothers show up. His father sends them down to Egypt. He hears that they have grain. They show up. He recognizes them. They don't recognize him, and uh, uh, he begins to question their story. They say, well, there's another brother. Our father's back home, and uh, we have one brother that, that, that's not anymore. He's died, and so uh, so he, he accuses them of being spies, and he, he locks them up uh, for three days. And, and then finally he comes unto them, and, and, and he tells them, now if you'll go get your brother and bring him back, uh, then, uh, uh, then I'll go ahead and believe you. One of you will stay behind, and, and uh, the rest of you go get your younger brother and bring him back and, and prove that you're not spies. But, but in that process, uh, you find his brothers, uh, they're, they're relating back to that event when they sold Joseph into slavery, 18 to 20 years prior, saying, yeah, all this is coming on us because of what we did years ago. Their conscience began to bother them uh, because of what they did unto Joseph years ago, not even realizing that it's Joseph that they're standing in front of and they're dealing with. And so we need to live right because we have a conscience that tells us when we do wrong. There's a second reason, an external reason, not just an internal reason, but an external reason for living right. Uh, there are others that are around us watching. Uh, boy, a great example in Scripture is Joshua and Moses. Uh, Joshua watched Moses. He was always in the background. He, as a young man in Egypt, uh, he saw Moses with, withstand Pharaoh and the Egyptians uh, at the Red Sea. He, he saw uh, that Moses didn't panic uh, when everybody else was panicking. Uh, Moses didn't. Joshua witnessed that. After deliverance, uh, Moses stayed true to God. He could have went his own way and but he didn't. He stayed true to the Lord, and Joshua saw all that uh, on Mount Sinai. Joshua uh, watched and uh, waited while, uh, while, while all the others were feigning in idolatry, and he saw the faithfulness of Moses, even though Aaron uh, wasn't faithful during that time. Uh, and any time Moses was put to the test, Joshua was there to see his reaction. And uh, even when Aaron and Miriam, uh, his brother and sister of Moses, questioned him, um, uh, Moses remains faithful. Uh, Korah goes against him. Moses is faithful. The, uh, the people belly aching about food, the bitter water at Merah. Uh, Joshua witnessed the faithfulness of Moses over and over again. He, he lived right. He did right. He followed the Lord. And so he was, he was constantly watching. And I'm telling you, every one of us, we have people that follow, uh, follow us. They watch our, our lives and they follow our example. And so uh, we, because we have this influence, we need to live right because people are going to follow in our footsteps. And so there's an internal reason. Our conscience will bother us when we don't live right. There's an external reason. There are people watching us that will have an impact upon their life if we don't live right. And then there's an eternal reason for living right. Uh, in our text, in Ecclesiastes 12, verse 14, uh, Solomon says, For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, 
whether it be good or whether it be evil, doesn't matter how well you camouflage or whether you think you got away with it or not, uh, God's going to judge everything, the good and the bad, the good and the evil. And, and the reality is, uh, Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 10, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone uh, may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or whether it be bad. And so that same truth, that same reality is reiterated in the New Testament. There's a, a day coming when we'll stand before God. Every work will be brought into judgment. Every secret thing uh, will, be, will be noted. And uh, I'll tell you this, it's going to be a whole lot better to be rewarded on that day than to be reprimanded. I hope that, uh, that when we stand before the Lord, God's more focused on, on the good than the evil, that there's more good than evil, that we're rewarded instead of reprimanded. I know this, we, we live as if eternity's a long way off. But I know this, it may just be right around the corner. And as you look at the things that have taken place in recent days, uh, our, our world is changing so rapidly, and and uh, and things that uh, uh, things that, that that used to be so so settled and so established and so stable, uh, they are on shaky ground, and it it, it just appears that uh, uh, we we are certainly headed into the last days, and and uh, eternity may not be that far away. Uh, the the truth is, we're going to stand before God and give an account, and and. Uh, uh, we better make sure that we're right with the Lord, living right, doing right, reverencing the Lord, keeping his commands, because that is the whole duty of man. Solomon got it right, and I hope that we get it right, that when we stand before the Lord, he'll be well pleased with the way we lived our life for him. It all begins by putting your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, but that's the beginning. It begins with faith, and that faith, it spurs a life of obedience unto God, uh, where we honor him out of affection and adoration, uh, we yield our life unto him. We, we surrender our life, uh, literally, that, uh, that Christ is in us, the hope of glory. He's living in us and through us, and we're, we're honoring him with the way that we live. I hope, I hope that you'll, you'll do the whole duty of man. You'll fear God and keep his commands uh, because that's our responsibility. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for making things so abundantly clear unto us in your word. Uh, Lord, I, I know that uh, we live in a time of confusion, Lord, that's probably been true with every generation. There's confusion at hand, and yet, Lord, I thank you for your clarity. Uh, Lord, help us to be able to tune out all the things that uh, try to distract us and distort our thinking, and, and Lord, help us just to focus on what you said is important. Help us to fear you. Lord, help us not to fear everything around us, uh, but Lord, help us to fear you, to reverence you, and to, to worship you, and adore you, and exalt you. And, and then, Lord, I do pray that uh, because we love you and because we're reverencing and honoring you, uh, the Lord, we would keep your commandments and you'd be well pleased by the way that we live our lives uh, because it is an honor unto you. We're, we're exalting you and honoring you and showing you how much you mean unto us. Now, Father, bless our day. Help us to uh, be faithful in it. May we glorify you in the things that we do. Thank you again for this opportunity, Lord. Just uh, speak to hearts. If there's one unsaved, save them. And God, we're just going to praise you and thank you for the things you do. Uh, Lord, bless our day, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you. I uh, trust you're going to have a good day. Let's honor the Lord in everything we say and do and put him first. We love you. So does the Lord. And I look forward to seeing you on Sunday. Don't forget, we're going to celebrate Easter Sunday uh, this Sunday. And so uh, Resurrection Sunday, uh, time to get together and just uh, revel in the reality that our God is alive. I hope you'll be praying about, about Sunday and looking forward uh, to that great opportunity. God bless you.